In this course, our main tool for the conceptual design will be the entity relationship model. Entity relationship diagrams have three main ingredients, entity sets, relationship sets, and attributes. The rectangles represent entity sets. So here we have an entity set customer and we have an entity set account. The diamonds represent relationship sets. In this example, we have a relationship set depositor. The relationship sets are linked using lines to entity sets. Finally, we have attributes, and these attributes are linked using lines to the entity set that they belong to. Later, we will see that also relationship sets can have attributes. So the customer entity set here has connected attributes in ID, name, street, and city. And like we used to do before in the relational schemas, we underline the primary key attributes. An entity is an abstract object. Think for instance of a specific person, a specific company, or a specific event. Entities have attributes. People have names, addresses, events have a location, a time, a date, and so on. An entity set is a collection of similar entities. And similar here means they share the same properties, the same attributes. For example, think of the set of all persons, the set of all companies, trees, and so on. Again, we have an analogy with object-oriented programming. You can think of entities as objects and entity sets as classes. But there's one important difference between object-oriented programming and entity relationship models. In entity relationship models, we only model the structure of the data. We do not model the operations. So we do not have any functions or methods associated to entity sets. Only attributes. An entity set is represented by a set of attributes that are shared among the entities in this entity set. For instance, every customer entity in the customer entity set has an attribute ID, name, street, and city. Every loan has a loan number and an amount. We can have different attribute types, and we will see an example on the next slide. We have simple and composite attributes. A composite attribute is composed of many other attributes. For example, a street is composed of the street name and the number. We can have single-valued and multi-valued attributes. The age of a person is a single-valued attribute. A person has only one age. The phone numbers of a person are a multi-valued attribute. A person can have many phone numbers. We can also have derived attributes. Those attributes can be computed from other attributes. For instance, the age can be computed from the date of birth. Let's look at these different attribute types in an example. The address is a composite attribute. It itself has attributes attached to it. The address consists of the street, the city, the state, and the zip code. Composite attributes can be nested. The street is a part of the address and it is itself a composite attribute. It consists of the street name and the number. Likewise, the name is a composite attribute. It consists of the first name, the middle initials, and the last name. The phone numbers are a multi-valued attribute. In the entity relationship diagram, this is indicated by this double line around the ellipse. The age is a derived attribute. It can be computed from the date of birth. 
such derived attributes are indicated using a dashed line in the entity relationship diagrams. Composite attributes can also be multivalued. For example, if you want to allow that a customer can have multiple different addresses, then we could make a double line around address to indicate that this attribute is multivalued. Let's look at the formal definition of relationship sets. Let's start with an example. Here we have two entity sets. We have an actor entity set, which consists of the entities Yuma Thurman, Mark Hamill, and Harrison Ford. And we have a movie entity set that contains the movies Pulp Fiction, Star Wars, and Indiana Jones. And these two entity sets are connected by a relationship set that is called place in. A relationship is an association among several entities. Formally, a relationship is a tuple that contains the participating entities. For instance, the place in relationship set has two participating entity sets. So the relationships in the sets are pairs. These pairs in the example are indicated by these lines. So for instance, Yuma Thurman Pulp Fiction is a pair in this relationship set. Other examples are Mark Hamill Star Wars is also a pair that is in this relationship set and Harrison Ford and Jana Jones as well. A relationship set is a set of relationships of the same kind. So formally a relationship set is a set of tuples, E1 up to EN, such that E1 is from the first participating entity set, E2 is from the second participating entity set, and so on. The example given above is formally a set of pairs, consisting of the pair Yuma Thurman Pulp Fiction, Mark Hamill Star Wars, Harrison Ford Star Wars, and Harrison Ford Indiana Jones. In the entity relationship diagrams, the relationship set place in between the entity sets actor and movie is indicated using the diamond, and it is connected using lines to the actor entity set and to the movie entity set. To improve readability, we can annotate the connections between the relationship set and the participating entity sets with role indicators. So in this example, we have an entity set customer and an entity set shop, and they are related by a buys from relationship set. Here we can annotate the connection to the customer with the role buyer and the connection to the shop with the role seller. The degree of a relationship set is the number of participating entity sets. A relationship set of degree 2 is called binary. A relationship set of degree 3 is called ternary. Up to now we've only seen binary relationship sets. On this slide we've seen an example of a ternary relationship set. Here we have a ternary relationship set works on. It is used to express that an employee can work on different jobs at different branches of the company. Strictly speaking, we don't need ternary relationship sets. We can always model a ternary relationship set using binary relationship sets and an artificial entity set. So the ternary relationship set R contains triples of the participating entity sets. The artificial entity set E contains also these triples, but now we consider them not as relationships, but as entities. And these binary relationship sets RA, RB, and RC relate each of these triples in E to precisely one entity in A, one entity in B, and one entity in C.